everyone on YouTube. I'm back with the latest episode of my Diecast Review Series 2011. But a few more arrived since I last spoke to you, which was about 10 days ago. Not my, really had much time for an update in the last few weeks, so I've been dealing with a college application and so on, so I've been very busy with that. But I'm back now to update you on some of the cars that have been coming in over the last few weeks, including, very soon, some ones that should be coming in, hopefully in the next week. But uh, for now, get your sunglasses ready, because you're going to need them. Shine! Bright car! It is, yep, yeah, there's only one car it could be. It's Paul Menards, number 27, Peak Antifreeze, stroke Menards, stroke Pittsburgh Paints, Richard Childress Racing Chevy. Excuse me. Now, a little bit of background on the driver. Um, the box is around here somewhere, but it's the RCR box. There's really not much else I can say about it. Um, now, a little background on the driver. I've, I've slagged him off in the past for just being a sort of pay driver, you know. I think it was Tony Stewart who said it once. He's like, well, if your dad can afford to keep putting a sponsor on your car, then, you know, you can just sort of buy your way to the top. But this season is really, well, the last few seasons have been gradually improving and going up in my estimation. And since he got the Brickyard 400 win, I've actually started to respect him a bit as a driver. He's, um, he's done pretty well. And uh, I don't care what anyone says, fuel mileage races aren't luck. They're brilliant strategy and the execution of that strategy, which has a place in racing. So his victory was equal parts skill, a little bit of luck, some strategy. It was all the elements, so he deserved to win. And uh, I wasn't originally going to get his car, but since he won this race, he's guaranteed himself entry to the 2011 Bex World Shootout, so I thought may as well. Let's have a look at the car now. Like I say, shield your eyes, this may blind you. Um, there's the front end, the traditional Chevy Impala. As you can see, Lionel NASCAR defect alert. Well, a little bit. That light's a little bit high up. Not too bad. Could be a lot worse. There's the Peak Antifreeze hood. He's um, he's had quite a few sponsors on. The, the one they're making this year for him is the Peak Antifreeze. Here's the side, as you can see. Um, hold on a sec, let me get my glasses. Sorry, I'm slowly going blind. There we go, right. As you can see, let's have a look down the sides. Not very many sponsor stickle, uh, stickles, stickers uh, on the side. The, the sort of generic stickers they all have. Um, and it's a nice sort of plain pattern. Uh, he's always had this sort of lime yellow, bright yellow scheme. Obviously, the, the Menard sponsorship. Um, but this divider, I've talked a lot about how like you have two-tone cars and how the, the colours sort of complement each other. This isn't really two-tone. It has a sort of flowing stripe on it. You see there, it sort of starts there and then goes down and back on itself down here. So it's a subtle little slide sort of um, flash thing on the side that goes and ac accentuates, is that the word, the uh, the wheel arch there. And it's an interesting, it's a little bit different, you don't really see many people, if you do, if you see stripes on cars it's normally length of the body or you know to divide two colours from the other, do you see what I mean? And the sort of, you see there there's a two tone to the orange, there's a slightly lighter shade and then the darker shade and it mixes together up there and it looks really nice, there's a sort of accent on the side there's the number obviously 27 which is vaguely sort of Richard Childress font uh, and it looks quite nice, outlined in white as you can see and there's the uh, typical Menard sponsorship, Quaker State is another one of his many many sponsors in fact they're all listed down there uh, Sylvania uh, uh, Peak Antifreeze Blood Mud Total Wax, yeah you can read you can see all of those for yourself now some of the back and Menards, and the Menards theme is continued with that little orange flash, so I wonder if that's part of the official Menards logo. And uh, there is another sponsor on the back there. Come on, focus, it's looking a bit like a penis. Um, I can't even tell what that is, that's a little bit worrying. Um, I'll get back to you on that one. Um, yeah, there's the 27. And a black spoiler, which works rather nicely with the... Oh, hang on. The uh, black bit at the top of the hood, just sort of underneath the windshield and uh, obviously there's the other side on a little note there, there's the Pittsburgh paints and the sort of anti-flip spoiler um, sort of fin that they put on the back, that's picked out in black as well so it's a nice little contrast and overall a really nice car, I'll tell you what, this is well, for sheer sort of signature potential, this one is an absolute stunning you will not find probably a more striking car in this year's series bar none probably, there's a few but sheer, for sheer sort of zing potential, that's an official, you know, technical term by the way. Um, 
this is definitely worth picking up. Also, very rare. It's one of these cars that this year, I mean, Lionel NASCAR haven't been producing that many uh, die cars this year. The ones they have done have often had, like, grills up on the windshield or something. Stupid mistakes like that. But this was one of the ones that was done in very, very low quantity. So on die cars cars now, it was originally sold out and then restocked in and then sold out again. So I finally got it on a sort of multiple pre-order thing. So I'm quite pleased to have got it. And if you can track it down, do so, because it is a brilliant car, lovely looking car, and well, the driver himself is worthy of praise and deserves to have your, he deserves to be on your shelf in, in die cast form. So the Lionel NASCAR rating, uh, I'll give it a 9, uh, that front light defect is pretty much the only defect on the car, that's about it. Um, as for the paint scheme, 10 out of 10 I'd say, not very imaginative, there's not really much going on, the peak antifreeze, well no actually 9.5 I'd say. The peak antifreeze is a bit off, it's, you know, sort of, well, it sort of suits, but sort of doesn't at the same time, if that makes sense. Very simple paint scheme, but effective. It doesn't need to be hugely complicated, and it works really, really well. And with a colour like that, you're always guaranteed attention. I mean, this probably is the first car I've ever seen that could probably glow in the dark. If there was ever a power cut at a night race, you just use this car to guide the other cars around. So this has been my review on Paul Menard's 2011 car. Got a few more to come, and so hopefully they should be coming very soon including the two you can see at the back. Look who it is, it's Dale Jr. And I finally managed to track down a Kurt Busch car, and all these other ones are also unreviewed so far. Plus, a little delayed, it will be the Monday diecast, the Monday special diecast review rather than the Friday. It will be something I picked up at a classic car show today. I'll show you that in a little bit. Until then, see you next time.